Right now on Sunrise, the investigation into the terrifying tragedy in Boulder deepens this morning. The new court documents that could give us answers as to why this happened. There are spare doses, but you're not quite eligible. Do you still take it? The ethics debate over leftover vaccines. A bit chilly this morning, but at least the sun is back. How's your weekend shaping up and when's the next big warm up? Then a popular radio show's bit goes way too far. I will never go to a Serena Williams level. The online firestorm it's now facing from listeners after comparing the color of their toast to people's skin tone. A Minneapolis firefighter is putting his skills and endurance to the test. He's taking on one of the toughest climbing challenges in the world, Mount Everest. It's Thursday, March 25th. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. Hey, Sunrisers. Okay, we have a question for you. What do you think about those leftover doses going to people who technically aren't eligible. Join a conversation 763-797-7215. We've got those comments right here to us in the studio here. Yeah, keep them coming. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Jen tracking the, the traffic for us this morning. Guy Brown in the backyard. Finally a morning guy where we don't need the rain jackets. Nope, don't need the rain jacket. I don't have my umbrella. But you may want to grab the sunglasses. So kind of flipping the switch on you guys. And I'm sure most of you aren't too mad at the sun on the way. First, let's get right into it. Noticeably cooler this morning. Temperatures are in the 30s and it feels like the current air temperature. Moments ago on sunrise, we uh, did have a wind chill. If you were up with us earlier, if you're just now joining us, no wind chill to talk about for now. And winds will be light and calm. Things won't be nowhere near as breezy as they were yesterday. Highs today in the 50s, upper 40s, low 50s with sunshine, nice and quiet. We'll do some drying out seven day as promised. Showers return to the forecast on Saturday, quiet on Sunday, and I'll be breaking this down more coming up here in about 10, 15 minutes. All right, roads are green, looking good. I keep refreshing my 511 app to see if any crashes have popped up. Nothing so far, though, so good news uh, for your commute this morning. Breaking overnight in Minneapolis, a man in his 40s is dead after a shooting on the south side. Police say it happened outside a gas station near 17th and East Lake Street just before midnight after a fight broke out. Police are scrubbing through neighborhood security cameras to find whoever pulled that trigger. Happening today, the man accused of gunning down 10 people inside a Boulder, Colorado grocery store will be in court for the first time. 21 year old Ahmad Alyssa is charged with 10 counts of first degree murder, and we've learned the weapon he used purchased just six days before that attack. That's the same day as the Atlanta spa shootings. Investigators are still searching for a motive. And then take a look at this map. The shooting happened in Boulder. The shooting in Boulder happened less than a week from the deadly shooting rampage in Georgia. And in that time frame, all of those mass shootings you're seeing that popped up have occurred 10 in total. Now, John says he'll, he'll he never wants anyone to feel the way he felt that day in Boulder. Again, he's speaking out coming up on today. That's at 7 a.m. right after sunrise. We're tracking the latest in the fight against COVID-19. Here's three things to know this morning. 89 people who have been fully vaccinated for COVID still got the virus, but in Minnesota, that's out of around 800,000 people or less than one tenth of 1%. And so the Minnesota Department of Health is saying that small percentage really isn't reason for alarm, and they still recommend that you get vaccinated. Governor Wall's quarantine ends today. He was working from home after a staffer tested positive two weeks ago. Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan and State Commissioner of Health Jan Malcolm were also quarantining. And Americans have lost nearly $400 million in COVID scams. The FTC says they've received hundreds of thousands of fraud reports since January of 2020. Seniors are being hit the hardest with the average of $900 lost. Okay, now in our Sunrise Live this morning, a question that has our Sunrisers sounding off this morning. Should you get a vaccine shot even if it's not your turn? It's an ethical question dividing hundreds of people on our CARE 11 Facebook page. You can argue that it's wrong to jump the line, but the more people that get vaccinated, the more lives we can save from COVID-19. And if a pharmacy has an extra dose that isn't being used, then what's the harm in taking it? We talked to Joel Wu, a bioethicist and professor at the U of M School of Public Health, and he says the answer is complicated. There is some inequity and there is some disparity in who in community is going to be able to take advantage of those doses that would otherwise have been wasted. And I think we're willing to tolerate some of that unfairness to avoid the harm of waste. 
because the more of the population we get vaccinated, the better of a chance that we have to interrupt transmission of the disease. All right, it's an interesting question. So some local Walmarts have vaccine waste lists for people who aren't eligible for a vaccine right now, but hope to get an unused dose at the end of the day. And most have hundreds of people on the list and are not taking new names. As a reminder, here's who can get vaccinated based on state guidelines. Anyone 65 and older, healthcare workers, educators, and targeted essential workers, people with specific high risk conditions, and Minnesotans 16 and over with two or more underlying medical conditions. But here's what some of you are saying about this question. Joanna thinks people should absolutely take leftover doses if they can. It's way better than wasting a dose. But Lisa thinks people should wait their turn, saying she knows of a young couple that got it before her husband, who's diabetic. And Dan said he was able to get an extra dose at a vaccine clinic and doesn't feel bad about it because of the guidelines on how long vaccines can be out before expiring. So what do you think? How do you feel about people getting extra or unused doses before they're eligible for the vaccine? Text us this morning at 763-797-7215 and we'll share some of your messages in just a few minutes. Back to the Walmart thing though. My husband saw this story and called a, a Walmart last night. I can't remember which one. And it was like the first thing they said when you got through like, hi, this is Walmart. Our waste list is full. Oh, wow. so they wouldn't even take yeah. his name. Yeah. And I heard Walgreens is doing kind of the same thing too. Some of the CVSs and Walgreens, yeah. but um, pretty interesting debate. Yeah, yeah. text us. Yeah. Good stuff. Jen, thanks. Happening today, Minneapolis police officers will have to go through mandatory training on detaining people and making sure they can still breathe. The city's Police Conduct Oversight Commission is covering this in a meeting today. The training video comes nearly a year after George Floyd uh, was killed after ex-officer Derek Chauvin kneeled on his neck. And it comes as Minneapolis City leaders are preparing for opening arguments to begin in former officer Derek Chauvin's trial. Those get underway Monday. Today, city leaders are meeting to discuss security and safety concerns in downtown as the trial ramps up. And be sure to stay with us throughout the Chauvin trial. We're going to bring you daily unprecedented live coverage from inside the courtroom starting Monday morning at 9 a.m. The entire trial is going to be broadcast gavel to gavel right here on CARE 11. You can also watch our digital stream on care or on our mobile app. Now time for your morning rush. We're getting new information about a carjacking in New Hope. Police say it happened on the 9400 block of Northwood Parkway yesterday afternoon. They tell us multiple people forced elderly victims from their car and stole some of their belongings and stole their car. Police did arrest one of the suspects. A proposal to legalize recreational marijuana in Minnesota is making its way through the state capitol. The bill just passed the House Agriculture Committee. Lawmakers say the farming economy could benefit from the products being grown and processed in Minnesota. The bill is now heading to the Natural Resources Committee. The future of a dive bar favorite in Minneapolis is up in the air. An Axios report says the owners of Liquor Lyles are selling the Lowry Hill staple. It's been closed for almost a year because of the pandemic. The bar has been around since the 60s. Depending on who buys it, Liquor Lyles could stay open under new leadership. The Wild is riding a 10 game home winning streak. They took down the Ducks for a second time last night with a three and two win. The Wild take on the Blues tonight at home. Puck drops at seven and that is your Thursday morning rush. All right, Guy, what's the one thing we didn't know about the forecast today? Hey, you know, right now we're getting some developing fog too in portions of the metro. So come on over to your TV screens, take a look. The visibility is falling less than a mile in some places like Princeton, Cambridge as well. At least we're making out AOK -OK in the Twin Cities at 10 miles, one mile in Eden Prairie visibility. All right, this is 94 in the Rogers area. Things look like they're running along smoothly. Some construction in that, in that area you probably are, already know. Otherwise, the roads are looking great. But with so many kids in virtual learning, parents may be concerned about whether reading on a screen is just as good as reading an actual book. Let's connect the dots. According to a professor of linguistics at American University, the format children read in can make a difference in how they absorb the information. One issue is mindset. Since most of us use screens for fun and socializing, we bring the same approach to whatever we read on a screen. So when it's time to really absorb new information, we may not be paying the right kind of attention if it's on a screen. It can also mean we read on screens too quickly. So what does the professor recommend? For the youngest readers, stick to old-fashioned books. This makes it easier for parents and kids to interact with the words on the page, allowing kids to go at their own pace and ask questions. While there are apps and ebooks for new readers, they often include too many distractions. 
For school-age kids, it's a lot harder to avoid screens, but the experts say it's a good time to talk to kids about the differences between screens and printed material. That can help them start to figure out what helps them learn and keep the conversation going. As kids get older, they get better about picking up skills to stay focused, which can be a challenge no matter the medium. Yeah, I definitely think screen, screen, especially for my niece and nephew, screen time is one of the biggest struggles oh, that no. my, my sister-in-law and my brother face, and pulling that screen right. away is so hard. It's anytime I'm talking to my nieces and nephews, they're just like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Right. You know, they're never paying attention. I'm like, hey. It's the times we're living yes. in, I guess. Hey, 540 now. The traffic jam heard around the globe. One of the busiest waterways in the world is blocked, and it could be days before it's open again. How officials think it happened? If I'm able to get to the top and, and show the firefighters for healing flag, it will just be an um, emotional, spiritual experience I'll never forget. Then a Minneapolis firefighter is taking one of the toughest climbing challenges in the world. What's pushing him to climb Mount Everest? Coming up in just four minutes. For Women's History Month, we are celebrating change makers in Minnesota. Today, Anna Arnold Hedgeman. Hedgeman was the first black student to graduate from Hamlin University in St. Paul. She'd later become the only woman on the planning committee for the 1963 March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom.